You never know for sure whether or not stuff like this is reliable, but man, a wide ideology gap is opening up between young men and women in countries across the world. Uh, look at South Korea, dude. I knew South Korea had like a pretty aggressive anti-feminist movement going on with their younger population, but Jesus, this is the political ideology of 18 to 29 year olds. Percent liberal minus percent conservative by sex. I don't know how uh, much this is influenced by stuff like, uh, you know, like radicals. I don't know, like whether they count leftists or whatever. Yeah, I, I don't know the exact methodology. No matter the methodology, shit like this is pretty noteworthy, you know? Brit bongers win on this chart to an extent, yeah. I mean, UK men, it's, that's the closest we're getting, I suppose, to goodness here. Uh, yeah, a, a lot of this, you know, isn't really that surprising, I, I don't feel. Like I've said, fascism, and I guess to a large extent reactionary politics, is about uh, masculine anxiety and everything that it does to society. You know, nowadays a lot of men feel kind of like listless and adrift and lost, and they don't know if they're going to be able to find their way in life or find love, and I sympathize with them for that. Um, but the consequence of this is that a lot of guys are, let's be clear here, completely likable, right? Like. A lot of guys are just miserable wretches. They're not like that innately. I don't think they were born that way. I don't think anything forces them to be that way, like in, in, in a way that can't be corrected for. Um, but just in terms of spending time with other people, women are better people. Uh, that's not because there's anything innately better about being a woman. It's just a lot of guys are miserable wretches, you know, just wretched, wretched people, angry and bitter and jealous and hateful. And there are women like that too. Don't get me wrong. There certainly are. Just not as many of them. Also, a lot of bitchy women make up for it in other ways, you know, there's like an effort at least at being funny or there's some kind of passion or interest, but there's some, some guys are just black holes of, of nothing. I, I think a lot of this is a mental illness thing, like it could be depression or alienation, uh, a feeling that being a man means you have to be kind of like stoic and disaffected and disconnected and all that other crap. I, in fact, I think that's a, a huge part of it, you know, guys are taught, um, you know, it, it, it's it's kind of like emasculating or feminine to be upfront with your emotions. And because of that, they just are, are naturally closed off and distrustful of others as a, like as a default, you know, they just don't share that much. So it's not a huge surprise. A lot of them would, would turn up this way. Go look up the questions they asked on the test. Many of those uh, tests, many of those questions were dog asked. Like some of these were literacy test level questions. Blue star shift. I don't know what you're referring to. What does that mean? Literacy test level questions? There's a paywall on the article. Can you find it for me from this graph? Okay, let me see. I really would like the full article. Hate paywalling that crap. Oh, this is just down the thread, I see. Here's South Korea where the ideology divide between young men and women is famously wide. Young women have become markedly more progressive on gender norms, but young men have not budged. The result, an emerging social rift. Share who agree with the statement that what women really want is a family and children, although they like to work too, by age and sex. So if you look at older Korean men and women, basically nobody thinks that this statement is true. Wait, what? this statement's kind of confusingly worded. What women really want is a family and children, although they like to work too? I guess that's not like poor, like, like that's not uninterpretable. It's just kind of odd. And of course the gender gulf here. Share of people who agree with the statement that Women seek to gain power by getting control over men by age and sex. Damn, dude. Look how, look how much uh, younger guys are shifting up on this one, on this particular question. Uh, I've told you, remember? I've told you. A huge number of guys, like a significant number of them, are et eternally bitter and resentful towards women because they think that women are trying to, like, evilly trick them with their pussies or whatever. All groups of Britons have become much more progressive on race and immigration, except young men opening up a divide among young adults. This is also a sex thing, by the way. Here's Germany on a similar issue. Young German women have become markedly more progressive on attitudes to immigrants, while young German men are more conservative on this than their elders. This is also a sex thing. In Poland's elections last year, 46% of young men voted for the far-right National Confederation Party, compared to just 16% of young women. There was no such divide among older age groups. Cool. It's always a sex thing. It is always a sex thing. Bitter, lonely men feel that something that they're entitled to, pussy, or a loving family, or whatever else, anything woman-related, 
uh, has been taken from them either by the, you know, the nefarious Jew or by, you know, evil globalist, blah, blah, or by SJWs or whatever. This is the under, this is the underlying root of all reactionary movements fundamentally. Or yeah, the, 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 the insidious Tyrone, the fear that immigrants will come in and f your women or whatever. I'm telling you guys th this is, some, you can learn more from politics, uh, by just briefly looking at like interracial pornography comics even like on twitter you find one artist who does that stuff browse that for five minutes and you will learn more about politics than you could from a four-year poli sci degree all of politics is that there was like a one-to-one -one relationship between being a conservative and being a racist and being obsessed with the depiction of black men as like seven foot tall hairless giga chad muscle men with eight foot like Flaw, like go to 4chan go to 4chan go to the 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 gifs porn board or find one of the 18 currently active threads on interracial pornography and then uh, uh, oscillate between the interracial pornography and people being very racist but in a way that makes it clear they're getting off to it that's all that's conservatism that's it it's it's present literally everywhere they do it everywhere in israel i guarantee you that zionists uh, Zionist fascists down there fall asleep at night, flop sweating at the idea of a Giga Chad Arab alpha male, their like uh, Jewish wife or whatever. Or 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 in or in China, there are like fascist Han nationalists who are 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 terrified of a uh, like a, a Tibetan or or Uyghur Muslim Giga Chad alpha male. But like this is literally all they have. You know, a, a, a cursory reading of America's history through like Jim Crow and slavery, where there was so much like lurid, veiled pornography made about the brutish black man and their obsession with white women. Like there would literally be white citizens council meetings where these like 40 or 50 year old white men frothing at the lips would talk about how these big brutish animalistic black men wanted to ravage their wives. You know, I, I, I hope they all wore loose pants to the function so they didn't embarrass themselves. Like literally, you, you go back to the slave days. Uh, they, 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 they would punish slaves by castrating them and killing them because it was like uh they had to like engage in one final act of violence against the perceived sexual prowess of the black man i'm so lost you can't be lost on this this is the entire right wing this is the entire right wing this is it literally look at these texts from vince mcmahon he literally goes uh, uh, on with his obsession of wanting to see black uh men fuck this woman he's abusing he's also a huge trump supporter I haven't seen this before. I have a feeling that my point's going to be validated. Yep, it certainly looks like it. <laughs> so this guy was abusing this chick and also doing all this? Not very good at sexting either. Like, for several reasons. He owned WWE. This was the- this was the- that, that Vince? Oh! I didn't remember his name fully. I thought, oh, is that the guy? But I didn't think it was that the guy. That guy? That guy's racist as f Oh, yeah, okay, well, there you go, yeah. They're all like that, by the way. It's not just Vince, that's every conservative. Reactionary politics are irrational, correct? Like, I have demonstrated that for like five years now. I hope we're on board with this consistently. If you look at the root of like sexism or racism or whatever, there, it, it, there's not like some logicked out argument, you know? Usually there's a very strong emotional belief that then uh, supplements arguments that are used to post hoc justify it. Like... People will have this deep fear. So, for example, everyone is like this, by the way, okay? The ability to construct a rational argument that is rational from the start is very tough, and it takes a lot of thought, you know? Like, that's not something most people do, and everyone is subject to emotional bias, right? So a good example of this would be insecurity. All humans feel insecure irrationally at some point. It's a social compensatory mechanism. So at some point in your life, I'm talking to you specifically, viewer, you, not the other people in chat, I'm talking to you. At some point in your life, you got in your mind the idea that someone you liked didn't like you. You didn't really have a rational reason to believe this. You just got a kind of collection of feelings from them that made you feel self-conscious about any perceived uh, imbalance in interest. And as a consequence of that feeling that you arrived at, not a logical 
conclusion, but a feeling, you started treating them differently. Either you got clingy or maybe you distanced yourself from them because you wanted to avoid getting hurt or you felt like you were bothering them by continuing to express interest and in spending time with them. So you kind of retreated a little bit. Uh, these behaviors, depending on the exact way you did them and the circumstances, these behaviors were irrational. And I bet you that you created a lot of post hoc justifications to explain why you did those things. You had an initial feeling, and after that feeling, that strong feeling that guides your behavior, you think, as humans often do, they rationalize, you think, well, it's not just a feeling. What about this? Or what about that? But the things that you're pointing to as examples of why it's rational to behave the way you do, those are things that would apply to other people too. The what about this you bring up, well, that applies to other friends you have. The what about that you brought up, well, there's nothing wrong with that. You, you're post hoc rationalizing. You, you're, 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 from, you're doing this from the, the, the feeling first, you know? Fascism is an emotional bias fundamentally. There's a lot of stuff that ties into it and there are many ways it can manifest and take shape. Usually I think there are, you can imagine the socio-political landscape as having grooves cut into it. So if you have a set of positions, you slide downhill a little bit and the more positions that are like that position that you hold and the more strongly you hold them, the more you get pulled into pre-existing grooves cut into, uh, you know, into the landscape of this environment. This is one of the reasons why conspiracy theorists usually gravitate towards anti-Semitism. There are innumerable conspiracy theories, but the more of them you believe and the more strongly you believe them, the more necessary it becomes to believe that there's some kind of single entity or group of people controlling things behind the scenes. And the more you believe that, the more likely you are to stick on to other beliefs in that line and eventually be just through historical inertia, just because there are already so many belief systems that incorporate this conspiracy, you arrive at anti-Semitism. It's like, yeah, it's like the event horizon of conspiracy theories. It's like the, it's the, it's the, the, the point of no return. You know, it's, it's the final tipping point. It's the edge of the waterfall. With fascism, the primary underlying feeling is one, I believe, of uh, entitlement and insecurity. Fascism is typically a male phenomena. That doesn't mean that women can't be ideologically fascist. It just means that the predominant force in these movements tends to be male anxiety. And that's replicated pretty consistently in places where fascist movements happen. You know, that's, that's a pretty consistent trend. Now, why? Well, I think the reason for it is because uh, women historically have been subjected to very different expectations and standards to men, you know? Women, I think, have gotten the worst end of the stick when it comes to a lot of historical stuff, but that doesn't necessarily mean there aren't ways in which men have had a harder time. Mostly, I think, with certain expectations concerning uh, being a breadwinner, you know, being the center of the family, being strong, being independent, warfare, you know, there there are things, it's, it's not a perfectly equal uh, playing field when it comes to, like, who's suffering more or in which directions, right? I think that the way the relationship between men and women has changed has been very uh, painful to a lot of guys who, through a variety of social and cultural mechanisms, have strong feelings of entitlement to a very specific idea of what it means to be a modern man, you know? The brown shirts back in the Weimar Republic, the ones who supported the Nazis, they felt a lot of things. They felt uh, embitterment, and humiliation that the poor economy prevented them from providing adequate livings for their families. A lot of young people felt like their futures had been taken away from them. But it wasn't just that. There was also a sense of wounded ethnic and national pride, the idea that Germany had lost World War I because they were betrayed by the inside, by Jews. That was a widely held belief back then. Anti-Semitism wasn't unique back in like 1920s, 1930s Europe. It was pretty much everywhere. Uh, it was the industrial extermination of Jews. That was the, the wacky new edition addition to that particular formula because a lot of it had to do with like national pride and uh you know entitlement and 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 betrayal you had a lot of uh social upper crust you know judges and lawyers and politicians people who otherwise had quite a bit of money even with the economic uh troubles the country was going through they also well they went along with the fascist line right and then if you take a look at the messaging 
that the Nazis pushed when they started really gaining popularity. What did they talk about? No, like really, I'm asking, what did they talk about? If you go back and look or read historical records or whatever else, they were obsessed with the traditional family. A lot of this was because they had this like prescriptive belief that humans are supposed to have a very specific family structure, that anything which deviates from it is degeneracy, that they will literally kill you for. And under Nazis, a return to that old order could be expected. Now, the old order that they were describing didn't exist. The modern nuclear family, as we understand it, goes back in the United States to the 1950s. The idea of like individual atomized families, not multi-generational households, can be a little bit older than that. I'm sure in Germany it goes back farther than that. But fundamentally, though, it's a pretty modern idea. And that's the uh, dialectic in fascism, the contradiction. It's a relationship between Kitsch, you know, I'm, I'm paraphrasing Alice Caldwell Kelly here, who hates me, but I like her. Um, Kitsch, you know, uh, conservatism, traditionalism, an appeal to things long past, and an obsession with futurism, modernism, you know? That's why you have fascists who will say, you, you have Adolf Hitler, a man who will simultaneously dress up in like Bavarian lederhosen and take drip photos of him in high-waisted shorts, you know, and, and, a, and a feathered hat staring lovingly at the camera. You have the Nazi government, which promoted like German fairy tales as a way of guiding traditional morality, you know, really old fashioned stuff like that. But you also had an obsession with blood and steel, right? You know, literally like, um, like uh, the Luftwaffe and, and Blitzkrieg and like new modernization, new machines of war, new ways of inventing society, you know, build everything up. That's the contradiction, okay? But I think that contradiction is a politicized expression of male insecurity. Think about it. Doesn't that almost perfectly encapsulate the mind of the insecure kind of like uncertain of their masculinity guy right the simultaneous contradictory appeal both to this like blood iron and lightning futurism steely determined coal iron efficient a machine man the kind of thing that andrew tate wants you to be right the kind of thing he pushes for but also this kitsch traditional not modern frolic in the fields, raise a giant family in the countryside, that kind of thing. You can't have both. There's a pull in both directions. The fascist wants men to believe that they will be both uh, a father to nine children out in the countryside and some like man of iron who works in a, in a steely and emotionless fashion to bring wealth and prosperity to their nation. Do you see what I'm talking about here? Fascism is that insecurity. It's just projected onto an entire political system. Now, obviously, there's variance here, and different nations, different cultures, different peoples will have different um, pre existing conceptions of what that dynamic looks like. But I will say, guys, you can go online, you can test this theory by going online. Take a look at what American, Brazilian, German, Russian, Chinese, and South African fascists talk like. They talk the same. Because ironically, despite being hyper-nationalistic, fascism is an internationalist ideology because it stems from a human commonality. Broken brains. And our brains are all more or less the same, you know? That's what I'm talking about when I talk about, like, um, the obsession with black or whatever. And by the way, that's not something that I'm arriving at, like, first principle, argue it out from there. Just go and listen to fascists online. They're obsessed with black... I'm not telling you they are. You know they are. I'm just explaining why. Because at the end of the day, it's all a product of insecurity. The reason they don't like immigration isn't because they actually give a shit about being around people who are different to them. Fundamentally, they don't care. They only care about things that ignite the underlying insecurity, and they have a very deeply held insecurity of fear that people of other ethnicities and cultures will steal their women away. They have been talking about this since before fascism was even a term, before fascism was even a concept in, 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 the, in, in the minds of, of late 19th century dipshits. White Southern slave owners were petrified 
of black slaves having so the the the, the fear they said the fear they claimed they had was black slaves raping their white wives. But that wasn't the real fear they had. The real fear they had was black slaves consensually having sex with their white wives. And that's the thing they really feared. That is, and you can tell, you can tell even in the discourse today, you go back to the Brexit movement in the UK, they cannot stop framing the, uh, you know, the invasion of brown people as a threat to their white women. It, they're obsessed with it. Everything is about white women, white women, white women. The Germans did the same damn thing. They did the same shit. And you know what? We talked with the radical dino about this. It's not just a white person thing. The radical dino talked about wealthy incel Chinese fascists also talking about how black people are going to come in their Han Chinese girls. How many black people are in China? It's a country of 1.4 billion people. I guarantee you not many of them are black. But the anxiety doesn't have to be a product of like a real lived circumstance. It only needs to be a product of their own personal psychosis. This is one of the reasons why I've always been really insistent that we should take seriously the insecurities and frustrations of young men. Not because those insecurities and frustrations are always rational, though again, they're young people with insecurities. Obviously, it's not all rational, right? Like, that's always the case, right? Like, right? Obviously. Them being irrational doesn't mean they're not of sociological concern. In the absence of a soothing narrative, politics, coalition building, it's all about narrative building, you know? What can you do for them and how to convince them to come on board? If, as we talked about earlier in this very stream, young men are under the impression that feminism is going to do nothing but rob women from them, going to make them divorce them or be gold diggers or whatever, blah de blah blah That's what red pillars want to convince the dipshits who follow them of. They want to be, uh, you know, they, they, they want to present the impression that feminism ruin society because it encourages willful behavior from women and it sets them out of line with their biological interest and as a consequence of that uh people generally are made less happy that's their argument a convincing counter argument is needed and by the way i think that we're kind of seeing uh, like a a a, a, a self-fulfilling prophecy here because with the numbers looking like this or not numbers i guess with the chart looking like this does this not look like a dynamic which is going to produce less functional relationships between the men and the women? I'm going to be clear here, okay? In South Korea especially, I don't think this is a situation that should be solved by telling women they need to, like, I don't know, be nicer to guys. Because, frankly, I'm going to guess a lot of these guys are huge pieces of shit. I'm sorry, look at this line here, dude. Are you kidding me yeah i'm not i'm yeah i it's, you know d d deeply unlikable people many of them I'm, I'm quite sure there is a reason they're moving that direction and it's not inevitable it's not some like natural force you know we can't just shrug when a bunch of millions and millions of men like move over to fascism and, and we were just like oh whatever like how could anyone have stopped that like well no like obviously that didn't just happen on its own there are forces at play here ones we can probably influence. I feel like women are less prone to all types of ideological dogma, not just fascism. I disagree. Women are pr women women say lots of silly shit. I'm just talking about fascism and misogyny here specifically. I don't think there's anything innately different between men and women really, like fundamentally. Um I mean, some sometimes you got titties, sometimes you don't. There are some brain differences. I don't think they're that big of a deal. Most of it has to do with like hormone washes and the effects those hormones have on your body. And I think for the most part, it just means that women on average tend to be a bit more sentimental and they cry a lot. I don't think it's most of to my knowledge, most studies on brain differences between men and women indicate that the differences between them are pretty minimal you know like every once in a while you get some bullshit about like spatial reasoning but then it turns out it was just like some edge case thing or whatever and estrogen and testosterone just don't you know your brain is a robust it's a robust organ it's very complicated what about the few gay fascists? Is it the same insecurity for them? Well, to a large extent, yeah. And I think that insecurity can uh, transform as it moves between people, right? So maybe the base 
underlying insecurity of fascism is that like that that contradictory feeling of male entitlement to multiple in like desired futures you know sure to an extent but then that can easily transfer on over to people outside the dominant ethnic group there are black fascists there are female fascists there are gay fascists there are people who are all of those things there are pedophile fascists like milo yiannopoulos well that's all of them actually it's it's complicated this reminds me of the muslim gang panic over in Europe a few years back. Yep, and I said the same thing back then. I ask you, why are all these people concerned with a Muslim gang panic, one which statistically turned out to be nowhere near the issue they made it out to be, obviously. Why were they all so concerned with that when most of the people concerned with it were anti-feminism and anti-Me Too? In every other instance, when it came to anything involving the politics of these guys were chauvinists. They would make fun of women for getting raped. Uh, they did not give a shit. They did not promote any policy or activism or awareness towards women's sexual health or autonomy. Uh, functionally, they're politically pro rape But then, Muslim gangs. Why that? Well, it's pretty obvious, I guess, at the very least, if you agree with everything I've said in the past rambling half hour. Just remember, the gang thing is and always was a cover for their real fear. Their real fear was not Muslim gangs. Their real fear was Muslims coming over and consensually having sex with white women. The real terror in the mind of the of the fascist uh, is not that the white woman, uh, you know, they, they want to see not despoiled gets raped. They don't care that much about rape. They care mostly about keeping them unsoiled from interest in those groups. This is one of the reasons why, if you look at, like, older neo-Nazi propaganda, like the older shit, Storm Frontier shit, the only people held in higher disregard than Jews and black people are the white women who, who love them. Seriously, you notice that pretty consistently. Like, the, there will be, like, scathing betrayals of racial minorities or Jews or whatever, but the white women who love them anyway, un ungodly hate. You know, unbelievable hate. Pigeon, do you have opinions on this? And if not, why are you on my desk? Why are you on my desk?